World Cup Singapore Open 2022. About our team. Hi, I'm Edward Lim from Nanya Primary School. Together with my best friend, Brian Xiao, this is our second year participating in Robo Cup Singapore U12 Open category. Our team has achieved first place our Cat Coast Space Rescue U12 in 2021 with distinction. We also won Robo Cup Singapore Influencer Award with one first place and two second place in different subcategories. We attended Robo Cup Asia Pacific 2021, organized by Japan, and won Best Presentation Award and first place RCAP Influencer Award, Community Awareness. Besides Robo Cup, we also won a second place in National Robotics Competition and Amazon Future Engineer Bursary Award. Executive Summary of Preliminary Challenge The mission of the Preliminary Challenge is to navigate the virtual robot to collect the objects, different colour stones, avoid obstacles, deposit and achieve higher spots in a fixed time. The problems we investigated, turning, optional path, obstacle avoidance and generation of super objects sequence to collect in special zone first, and debugging issues. We achieved 2,720 points in the preliminary challenge and 2,695 points in the final challenge. In conclusion, we analysed the map carefully, found optimal strategies, checked debugging, and looked to complete the task in the shortest and fastest way for the robot to collect the RRCC BB set and generate the most amount, the most super objects and the highest overall score. How to find the exact position of the robot? Although the approximate position of the robot is given to us, which is quite useful for planning purposes, we managed to find out a method to find the exact position of the robot. Is usually off by not more than 10 cm. This helped us in some of our strategies, such as going to a specific location, example the deposit zone. The robot will update its exact position every 50 milliseconds or when it crosses the border between two zones. At the start of the game, two arrays are created to store the robot's approximate and exact positions. Then, the robot calculates the approximate x and y distances and is moved in 50 milliseconds and updates the exact position of the robot. After that, it would save the current approximate position of the robot in the array. If at any point in time, the new approximate position is different from the current approximate position, the robot knows it has crossed a border between two zones it updates the exact position accordingly to minimize errors. Our game. The video shown is the most exciting part as we have engaged the following strategies. Road planning, optimizing, avoidance and turning, generating super objects in the least time, and scoring. It's time for the robot to go to collect some super Super object, so the robot starts by navigating to the deposit zone. Meanwhile, it collects some objects on the way. The robot is now depositing. Sometimes the robot has some issues finding the wall. The robot now detects the wall and starts searching for super objects. Here, we have increased the playback speed. The robot now detects a super ob glass object.
The robot now deposits all these objects, gaining a lot of points. Applying the knowledge gained to the real world. The rescue robot is extremely useful in real world, especially in cases such as disasters due to weather or accidents. For example, there was a plane crash in China recently. We could deploy the robot to search for survivors by avoiding obstacles and finding human bodies by using the right sensors, such as visual, sound, and direction sensors. The China slope was remote and it was difficult for the firefighters to reach. Also, it was raining with storms and the timing was late without any street light. After analyzing the map and weather situation, we could make some adjustments to codes and our roads. Our robot could then carry out searches and execution tasks during night time to identify survivors, avoid big rocks, and rescue survivors to the safe location. In the real world, a search and rescue robot has many sensors to maximize the number of people that can survive. The sensors used most often include a temperature sensor, gas sensors, a camera, ultrasonic sensors, infrared sensors, gyroscopes or compasses, and accelerometers. The values from all these sensors are then processed and the robot subsequently decides where to search next and how to navigate that. We have come to the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. Please stay tuned to enjoy our game video.